Example 3.3. In this example, we have a photovoltaic panel, which consists of five different materials. Glass, followed by adhesive, then silicon, then solder, then aluminum nitrite substrate. The top of the panel is exposed to the environment and a given temperature. The sides and the bottom of the, of the panel are completely insulated. The top glass surface has an incident solar irradiation, which is given, which out of that 7% is reflected from the top surface, 10% is absorbed, and 83% is transmitted and absorbed to the silicon layer. The efficiency of the silicon layer is a function of the temperature and is described with this equation. The temperature of the silicon ranges from 300 to 527 Kelvin. The glass has a given emissivity, and the goal of the problem is to find the electrical power that is produced by this panel. This is a steady one-dimensional conduction case with constant properties. We will neglect the contact resistance and we will also neglect the change of temperature in the silicon layer. Please note that since the bottom of the surface of the aluminum substrate is insulated, we will be able to neglect the effect that the solder and the substrate will have in the problem. This is the resistance representation of the problem. Notice that due to insulation, we're able to neglect the effect that the solder and the aluminum nitride substrate have on the problem. In addition, because we neglect the temperature differences in the silicon layer, we're able to stop the resistance evaluation at the point between the adhesive and the silicon. So we evaluate it only at that point. In this case, we have a convection flux and a radiation flux live in the glass. We also have 10% of the radiation incoming into the system at the temperature at the temperature of the glass at the top. Then we have conduction taking place through the glass. Then we have conduction taking place through the adhesive. At the upper part of the silicon, we have 83% of the irradiation going in, being transferred into the silicon, and what goes out is the efficiency of it. That's why it is 83% times the efficiency that we have defined previously. The goal of this problem is to calculate the electrical power produced by the panel. This value is proportional to the amount of flux living the silicon times the cross-sectional area. In this problem, we need to find the power. We have already related the power to 83 eta g in the cross-sectional area, the length times the width. In this equation, the only term that we do not know is the value of eta, but we do know that it's related to the silicon temperature. So we're going to start by doing a balanced energy at the node of the TSI. In this value, we see that the value of Q is equal to 0.83 and we go from flux into rate of heat transfer, so we we'll multiply by the area. At the same time, we know that the value of, of the rate of heat transfer is equal to the change in the temperature and the total resistance that we have participated. If we evaluate it from TSI to top, the amount of the resistance that we are able to get is going to be G, which is the amount of um, resistance going through conduction through the glass and the conduction that you're going to have in the adhesive. Notice that we changed the, con the, radi uh, the resistance from a flux into a heat transfer rate so that the equations are consistent. And that is simply done by dividing the quantities by the cross-sectional area. 
If we combine these three equations, we're able to get the following relationship. That 183 G psi minus the temperature, the glass at the top divided by the resistance that we had already calculated. And we're going to call this relationship number one. Keep it in your notes because we're going to use it to be able to find the value of eta. We could do the same balance of energy at the node at the top of the glass. And we could find that the amount of Q in that node is equal to 0.83 G, the cross-sectional area, 1 minus eta, plus 10% of G L down. We could also relate Q to the change in temperature divided by the total resistance. Notice that in this case, the change in temperature is the temperature of the glass at the top and the fluid temperature, which in this case is the same as the surround. The two resistances that we have are due to convection and radiation, and both of them are in parallel. Once you combine them, you get the following. You get H, LW, the temperature of the glass at the top, minus the temperature of the fluid. This is the convection part, plus the radiation part, which is epsilon, sigma, the cross-sectional area, top to the fourth power, minus T infinity, to the fourth power. If we combine these two equations, then we're going to be able to get the second relationship. After substituting the definition of eta, we could find that these two relationships. Notice that we have two unknowns, the temperature of the silicon and the temperature of the glass at the top. And you have two different simultaneous equations. So we could find the two values. The one that we're interested in is the temperature of the silicon, so that we could find that the value of eta, and with that we could find that the value of the power. By solving these two simultaneous equations, you could find out that the temperature of the silicon is equal to 307 Kelvin. Notice that it has to be Kelvin since we have radiation, and radiation is temperature to the fourth power. Once you find the value of the silicon temperature, you could find out that the value of eta is equal to 0.247. Notice that this is a unitless quantity. And then substitute it in the equation for the power, and you obtain a power equal to 14.3 watts. Please take the time to solve these simultaneous equations and get the value for the silicon temperature find the value of eta, and ultimately get the value of the power. Double check the calculations and try to do the procedure on your own.